So welcome to the second video of my MacBook Pro event coverage. In this video, we are going to be focusing specifically on the pricing and configuration and the comparison between the different models of MacBook that are on sale right now. The Intel MacBook is dead, gone, but not forgotten except a little forgotten. But in its place, we have these new M1 Pro and M1 Max MacBook Pros, and my goodness, is there a lot to talk about. There are way more options that you can choose from than there are with M1 or than what people had been predicting. So in today's video, we're gonna dive into all of it because, wow, there's a lot. Let's get started. So let's not mess around here, folks. You clicked on this video because you wanted to know what MacBook is the best value for you. So let's start by jumping in on Apple's comparison webpage. So here we have the different models that you can choose from for the MacBook Pro, the M1, the 14 inch, and the 16 inch. So let's just go through this real quickly and look at some of the top line differences between these models. So obviously the biggest one is, is the jump in screen size. So from the M1 to the 14 inch, we actually have nearly a full inch larger display. That's really, really interesting because we're keeping much of the same form factor. If we scroll down to the size and weight category, you'll see that it's only about 0.4 of an inch wider and 0.3 of an inch deeper roughly as well as being exactly the same thickness and just ever so slightly heavier. So it's a very similar footprint, but you're getting a much larger display within that footprint. And that's actually one of the things that I find most interesting. A lot of the hot takes about these new MacBook Pros have been, oh my gosh, they look so thick. They look like the old unibody MacBook Pros, but actually they're not thick. I mean, this is the M1 MacBook Pro. The new 14 inch is the exact same thickness. It's actually 0.01 of a centimeter thinner. If we continue down, obviously we've got differences in the chip, but we're going to talk about that more in depth with the configuration options. One thing that is worth noting here is the difference in battery life. If that is of paramount importance to you, you'll notice that the 14 inch is actually rated for three hours less battery life than the already existing 13 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 chip. If you're willing to fork over cash specifically for battery life, the 16 inch is the one that will give you the most, although it is worth noting that you're paying $2,500 and you're only getting one extra hour than the M1 MacBook Pro for $1,000 less. Uh, moving down to the display, these are some pretty big differences, but you'll notice that between the 14 inch and the 16 inch, things are very consistent. We have the same 1000 nits sustained brightness with 1600 nits peak brightness on both of those. They both have true tone, wide color, ProMotion and adaptive refresh rates up to 120 Hertz. And the 14 inch is actually higher resolution than last year's outgoing 16 inch. So they are more pixel dense as well as being mini LED backlit XDR technology displays. So the display, I think, is a really big selling point in the 14 inch when compared to the MacBook Air and the M1 MacBook Pro. And for something that you're gonna be looking at 100% of the time that you're using the device, I think the display is not to be overlooked. So those are the key takeaways when you compare the three different versions of MacBook Pro that are on sale right now. Now, the big takeaway for me is that the 14 inch and the 16 inch are extremely similar. There are no exclusive features that you can only get by upgrading to the 16 inch, except for, I guess, battery life. But apart from that, the only difference is screen size and price. And speaking of price, let's jump in and start talking about the configurations because there is a lot to choose from and Apple didn't talk about most of it in their keynote. So here is the configuration page for the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So you can see that straight away we have an increase in price over the last generation Intel four Thunderbolt port 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now, personally, I don't think that that price increase is unjustified, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. 
and let me know. Now the most interesting thing about this new model is that it in fact comes with an eight core CPU and a 14 core GPU. That is not something that Apple talked about at all. In fact, in the higher tier model, which is $500 more expensive, you'll notice that you do in fact get the full 10 and then the 16 core M1 Pro. Now it's a little bit interesting that they still call this base model configuration M1 Pro, but in fact what it has are six performance cores and two efficiency cores. If we go over here and look in the technical specifications, you can see that this M1 Pro chip does in fact have a six plus two instead of an eight plus two in the other more expensive versions. The difference here is due to binning. If you actually took it apart and looked at it, the M1 Pro die itself would be identical to the other more expensive versions of it, but in this case it just has two of the graphics cores and two of the performance cores disabled. But it doesn't stop there, because if we dive in and start configuring a base model 14 inch, you'll notice that there are a lot of options that Apple didn't talk about during their presentation. There are four different SOC upgrades you can choose from. You can go to an M1 Pro with a 10 core CPU and a 14 core GPU, or a 10 core CPU and a 16 core GPU, a 10 core CPU and a 24 core GPU version of the M1 Max, or a 10 32 core version of the M1 Max, the full fat. Now these upgrade prices are actually slightly deceptive because it looks like if you upgrade here to the 10 plus 16 from the 8 plus 14, there you go, $300 extra, and then you start saying, hey, look at that, I can go to the M1 Max, which gives me support for more displays, as well as a lot more GPU cores, and you're also doubling the memory bandwidth, remember, from 200 megabytes per second to 400 megabytes per second. That is another thing that's really important not to overlook. And that's only $200? That's a really good deal. However, once you do that, the M1 Max only comes with 32 gigabytes of memory or 64, so you have to add another $400 to jump to 32 gigabytes. So this upgrade, if you don't wanna do the RAM, it's not a $200 upgrade, it's a $600 upgrade. Now on the flip side, let's say we wanna upgrade from the base model, right? The eight plus 14 configuration. And let's say 32 gigabytes of unified memory is really important to you. Well, at this point, if you are gonna get the 32 gigabytes and you do wanna get the full fat, I think the upgrade here from Pro to Max to get those eight extra cores plus additional display support is worth doing. Like that, that's a pretty good amount of performance to be gaining for $200. Now, of course, that only applies if 32 gigabytes is already on your bucket list. Now, if you do spec this thing up all the way, with the full eight terabytes of storage, you can spend almost $6,000 on this thing. But I think at the end of the day, most people probably aren't going for eight terabytes. So if I consider the max upgrade to be somewhere around two, you're spending $4,100. And I think you're getting, honestly, not a bad deal. I mean, obviously that's a lot of money, right? $4,100 for a 14 inch MacBook Pro. But you have to consider what we talked about in the last video that Apple thinks they can go toe to toe with the highest end laptop chips. They can go toe to toe with an RTX 3080. Now let's step things up to the 16 inch because while the internals on these two different products are actually very, very similar and a lot of the configuration options carry over, there are some differences. So if we take a look here at the base model, it starts at $2,500. And for that, you get the full fat M1 Pro. So you get the full 10 core CPU, the full 16 core GPU. You also get 512 gigabytes of storage. Now that's interesting, right? Because if you look back on the 14 inch for the same price, $2,500, you get the same internals, but twice the storage, a terabyte. So across the board on these 14 and 16 inch MacBook Pros, you can standardize the options and what you'll find is the 16 inch is always exactly $200 more expensive. No matter what upgrades you want to make, think about the 16 inch as a $200 upgrade. So you could say, hey, I wanna, I wanna get more storage. Well, you can get more storage in a 14 inch than you could in a 16 inch for the same price, or you could think about it like, hey, I want a little bit more battery life and more screen real estate 
that's a $200 upgrade. So if we reset the 16 inch here and go back to the base model, you'll notice that there isn't a cut down version of the M1 Pro that's available. So whereas the other one has the eight plus 14 and then the 10 plus 14 models, this is just 10 plus 16. But we do still have the option to jump up to the M1 Max with the slightly reduced 24 core GPU and that's a $200 option. But again, just like on the 14 inch, it's actually a $600 option because you have to add 32 gigabytes of RAM. But as with the 14 inch MacBook Pro, if you have already decided that you want to go for 32 gigabytes of RAM, it's really worth asking yourself, is it worth an extra $200 to gain eight GPU cores, to double the memory bandwidth and add support for additional monitors by jumping up to the M1 Max? I think for $200, that is a pretty solid upgrade. So my recommendation would be, if you are getting 32 gigabytes of RAM, definitely consider jumping up to the M1 Max. And if you don't want the M1 Max, definitely consider keeping it at 16 gigabytes of RAM to avoid inflating your upgrade costs significantly. The other thing that you need to consider is the 14 inch versus the 16 inch. It's a $200 upgrade, however you wanna spec it to go from 14 to 16 inches. Is it worth it to have the extra display real estate as well as the extra battery life, four hours? Pretty solid. Or is it not worth it? You know, you're getting the same internals, but it's a larger and heavier device. So I definitely think Apple has done a really good job streamlining these things and giving them a lot of options for a lot of different use cases. So and now what I'd like to do is go through my pick for what I think the most value conscious buyers should go for. So we'll start with the 14 inch and we'll start with the base model. Now we're starting already at $2,000 and that is no small amount. But personally, I think if you make the upgrade here to the 10 core CPU and the 14 core GPU, you'd find yourself in a pretty good spot. Yeah, you could make the argument that you should just spend the extra 100 bucks and get the full 16, but I think if we save our money there and put that into a terabyte of storage instead, then you're in a really nice spot. Now you'll notice that by upgrading the CPU, we also upgraded ourselves to the fast charging USB-C power adapter, and we're at $2,400, less than the starting price for a 16 inch MacBook Pro, but we have one terabyte of storage. I think this is a really good configuration. Moving on to the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I think keeping it stock here with the 10 core CPU and the 16 core GPU, then just upgrading to one terabyte SSD, I think that puts you in a pretty good spot. Now this is actually the middle configuration if you go back to the, the standard ones, but I think this is a really, really good sweet spot to be in. Uh, another thing that I would maybe do is put on the 24 core GPU. So that's gonna obviously put us at, at 3299. Now I actually did order pretty much the most expensive loaded out version of this MacBook Pro. I got the full 10 core CPU, 32 core GPU, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and one terabyte of storage. It's $3,900. That's really, really expensive. But I needed to find out for myself if this M1 Max, this full fat thing with as much RAM as it can take, basically the most powerful MacBook that has ever walked the planet Earth, I need to see it for myself. And honestly, if you wanna see it for yourself too, I don't blame you. So those are my recommendations for how you should spec out these MacBook Pros. Obviously there is a lot to talk about. I hope this video doesn't end up being so long and completely overwhelming, but anyway, that'll do it for today, guys. Uh, I've got a lot more stuff planned to talk about with these MacBook Pros. I'm really excited to get my hands on these. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.